Hey everyone, it's Kara from The Stylist Portfolio. So today's video is going to be on um, like a, I guess it could be like a review or a recap of the Elsa Scaparelli collection that was recently um, at the Dolly Museum here in St. Petersburg. Um, I went there last Saturday, so this like video is a little behind. I'm a little behind on my videos, but um, nonetheless, it's coming. So um, pretty much like this was the um, ad that they kind of like put out on it. Um, Elsa Scaparelli and the butterfly dress. So. I just want to read this quick synopsis here on the back of the pamphlet, kind of give you a little bit of background about Elsa Scaparelli and like her relationship with Dolly. It wasn't like a, you know, they dated and like all that stuff. It was like more of like he created something and she created a dress off of it. So I have like a ton of photos that I'm going to kind of like, you know, flash up here um, during the video, but I just want to give you a little background on her. And, you know, it's kind of surprising. I've been in the fashion industry for very many years now, and I haven't really heard too much from her. And I actually saw this billboard on the interstate when I was driving to work one day about um, their fashion collection um, together at the Dolly Museum. And I was like, I gotta go see this because I love anything about fashion. So just gonna read this real quick to give you a little bit of background, and then I'll show, I'll flash some of these photos um, to you. So. Dolly Ann Scap, as she's referred to, a surrealist painter and a legendary fashion designer were artists of kindred irrelevance. Ir irreverence? Irreverence? <laughs> I can't talk. It's like, I don't even know, after seven and I might have had a glass of wine before this. They shattered boundaries while moving in a circle of the intellectual and financial elite. Both operated in professions with rigorous conventions, painting and couture fashion and they both rebelled against those conventions. Ooh, I like a good rebel. They both succeeded by wedding new ideas with traditional craft. Dolly's paintings subverted the order of things, introducing dreamlike symbolic imagery to create new ways to see and think about his subject. Scaff's designs deliberately subverted traditional no notions of women's roles and beauty, embracing the ex exaggeration and exaggerating the nature of fashion. I can talk, I swear, I can do it. Dali and Scaparelli's collaborative projects demonstrate a unique movement where fine art and the art of design merged to create some of the most memorable fashion of their age. And I have a lot of photos of these, so some of these you'll see and I'll call out as I show them too. The lobster dress, the tear dress, the burru dress, the shoe hat, the skeleton dress, his design for her Leroy Soleil bottle perfume. Their fashion and art both delighted and shocked the senses. This approach was a trademark of their co collaborations. Their work embodied a sense of freedom and possibility that enlivened popular culture during tumul tumultuous times. Okay, enough of those big words. Let's get into some photos. Okay, so the first photo here is from the beginning part of the museum. So this the, this is the first dress when you walked in to the um, to the room where you saw. And I, I you get a little headset thing when you get to the um, to the museum, and each little um, place has a number, and you like punch into the number into your little iPad thing, and it it says like an entire. Um, like blurb about it. It's about like a minute long. So it started with um, classic, classism. Okay, I just like, can't even talk today. I'm just like, I need to wrap this up. Um, and this dress was absolutely beautiful. Like this to me, like a, a sleek black dress with a long train. It was just like the perfect dress to introduce into like this collection. Um, the next one is this um, kind of like military style coat with um, gold detailing and a long skirt underneath. Her, you can tell like as I go through these photos, the older um, styles versus the um, more like updated styles. It, and it's just, to me, I appreciate fashion so much and I love 
like where fashion started and where designer started and where they are now. So this is a very interesting dress. It's like this very light lilac color. And if you look close enough, it's like two like faces and they're kissing. I think that these are the type of things that really push the boundaries of like the social conventions of the time um, that like the little like blurb was talking about. But it, just like the detail in this and like how beautiful it looks, it's just, it's, it was just honestly beautifully put together. Um, so this one's a little bit odd. Um, when I was listening to the little um, blurb about this, it, and I'm probably not going to like say this right, but it was really showing like the different sections of like how people like hold things in. Like this is like, you know, where you like bottle things up and like, you know, it's just, there's different parts to a woman that she holds certain things in. So like, this is kind of like representing that, like she has a drawer on her knee and then in her stomach and in her abdomen and in her breasts. And you know, it was, it was interesting. Hmm. It's a good word for it. Very interesting. Here's a close up view of that. Um, and obviously I love furry balls. <laughs> That sounds so bad, oh my god. But it was a very interesting piece and like the meaning behind it was very deep. And I was like, hmm. It gets, it's like, it definitely gets you thinking about things. So this is one of the famous um, things that they had talked about in the little description in the beginning. This is the famous shoe hat. So um, just like breaking like those social conventions, this, I think the next, uh, I'll show a photo. So this is a photo of Salvador Dali Sorry, I'm looking at this on my phone because for some reason they didn't download to my computer. So this is a picture of Salvador Dali and this is what inspired the shoe hat. Um, it's just a shoe on his head and so um, Scap pretty much designed a shoe hat around that and that's what you see here. Um, and honestly, I feel like people would like wear that today. Maybe like people in England like Kate Middleton or you know, the new Meghan Markle, the new princess, like who, who knows? Um, but still like a very like cool design. It's different. Um, this is just a very pretty, um, overcoat with some like, kind of like, uh, they almost look like those kind of like oystery shells. Um, very like, um, shiny and blue. Um, then this is the famous lobster dress. So the phone in this photo right next to it is what Dolly created. He created the lobster phone. Um, and then um, Scaparelli created this lobster dress. There's a lot of things in her collection that they showed at this museum that had lobsters on them. And first, like before I listened to the, like, the little blurb about it, um, I was like, mm, there's a lobster on there. But there's always a reason for the lobster. Um, I don't know what this really was because there wasn't a thing about it, but I really liked this couch. It was like a lip couch. I kind of want it. Okay. So this is another dress. This is like representing like tears in in a dress and it's like it's based off um, a dolly painting where it looks like it's like all torn up. Um, so she created a dress off of it. So this is the famous, um, what did they call this? The, the skeleton dress. So if you look closely like on this, it actually like shows like it looks like it's like a rib cage and a spine and like just like the detail of this stuff can i just like tell you like i just thought it was like absolutely amazing like the detail going into this um and she just created this dress and it was it's just like absolutely beautiful and it's very like pushing the limit for that time period because it's sheer and it's like a, this the ribs and everything it's just oh my god it was just amazing Here's like, that's the um, actual sketch of the skeleton dress. And then her whole kind of like um, mantra of like what they, um, like on the design pamphlet had a lot of butterflies. Um, a lot of the souvenirs you could get had butterflies on them. It was, I guess, a big part of her actual um, designing was a lot of butterflies and this is just a very beautiful like butterfly dress and it's um kind of like a it looked like a chiffon type material um 
and just like all these multicolored butterflies and like I feel like even people nowadays would wear that like I feel like that's something you would find on like mod cloth or something um and then the trench coat is kind of like this like feathery looking ombre trench I don't honestly remember the backstory on this I just thought it was really cool looking um and then this is the shot glass blazer um I don't know I don't think they said anything about this one either but it was really cool looking so here's a photo of it all right this is like when you went into the next room so this is kind of like um I believe I believe they called this one like the wedding dress. So this is just like a huge, like I couldn't even tell you how long this train was. It had to have been at least 10 feet long. Um, and I think, did I get an up close photo of the, oh shoot, I don't think I did. I didn't get an up close photo of the um, detail on here, but I'll try to like crop it and blow it up for you. So this is like, it's like a sun on the back of it and it's all sequins. Like, can I just like, can we just like stop and take a moment and just realize like how much work went into this? Because it was absolutely breathtaking. It, it, it was just beautiful. And I literally like, I stood there and like, I think about like, cause I've tried to sew and I've tried to be like more of like on the design side and I am just not that type of person. Um, but I appreciate the work and everything that goes into making something like this. And this was just like absolutely amazing. Um, and it's just, it was just beautiful. Um, so these items i just kind of took a snapshot of like some of the collection so the final room was more of her um newer collection so you can see here like there's a couple dresses sorry the lighting they wouldn't let me take a flash in there so the lighting on some of these photos is kind of funky but um there like some of the dresses like the first one on the um uh left hand side it's like the sheer top the sheer like kind of like um overlay on the um over the brass and there's like a little cherry detail it's just like it's so it's still pushing the edge um i think like looking at her designs for now it's still just like it's very eclectic it's very novelty and i think that it's different so then she has um another lobster dress so the, i guess this is like lobster like version 2000 um circa 2000 um, and then her, like, even, like, the chiffon, like, over, um, the chiffon bottom has, like, all kinds of seashells and, like, fish print on it. It's, like, so cute. Yeah. I would probably wear that. I would wear something with a lobster on it. I don't care. And then here is some of her more modern, um, collection, too. Like, there's just so much detail and, like, work that goes into all these. It's definitely... I mean, it was just like, oh, it was so pretty. And then like this, this was like a cape that um, they had on one of the models. And just like, I mean, the detail that goes into all of these, it's just, I I just thought it was just an amazing collection. I can't say that enough. And I really like this one too. This was another cape and it's just, it's so novelty and it's so out there and it's so, it's so different than a lot of the things you're seeing on the runway nowadays. It's like everything is like very, there is some funky things out there, like don't get me wrong, but there's also like, like true fashion is like pushing the envelope and pushing, you know, boundaries and seeing like what you can get away with. And then this is also her um, book. It's, um, it's a bi biography and it's um, written by Meryl Seacrest. Um, I'm going to actually buy this and I'm going to read it because I'm very interested now in her collection and where she came from and where she started. Um, now that I've seen her line and see kind of like, you know, her collaborations with Dolly and how she pushed the limit on certain things and, you know, broke those social conventions. Like, I like those kind of stories because I like a badass designer. Um, so I'm going to read the book and I highly, I haven't read it yet, but I highly suggest like reading more upon her and like looking and doing some investigating. I'm actually probably going to read, start to read a book about Dolly too, because after seeing his collection there too, he just seems so, so deep and so like, 
so many layers to him that like I kind of like want to know more now that I've seen like where he started and like where his paintings have gone to it's just like absolutely his stuff is just absolutely crazy insane like they're just so cool and I highly recommend that if you're ever in St. Petersburg like you do go to the Dolly Museum because it's absolutely worth it it doesn't take a very long time and it's like it's not expensive at all to do and they have this cute little cafe and then they have this like outside area or this like kind of, it looks like an egg and it's all like natural lighting and I was like oh I love the natural lighting so, but that was just a quick recap of the um, museum. I wanted to just share all that because I just thought it was absolutely amazing. My dog is like right down here. She's like, hello. Um, but I will talk to you guys later. If you like this type of video, thumbs it up, comment below. I love interacting with you guys. So um, enjoy your Saturday night and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.